Previously on the Damage Guild podcast. Perhaps a pill shy ring we should go. You see off in the distance a town. The gate was severely damaged. Wrought iron bars bent and twisted. Some of them are. Holy wow. crap. Whatever busted down that gate we don't want to mess with. You can see groups of these zombies. There's some sort of magical presence here. Sudden weight pressing down on you. Embedded in the ground in the dirt are these tiny shards of crystal. Looks like it's obsidian. Up in one of the towers. The top edge of hat followed by a couple of eyes poke out. We mean you no harm. Are you living? Of course I'm alive. My name is Nerdok Strathus. Strathus! Oh, oh my gosh! Thank the Ram Lord! We got separated and my brother ran farther into the town. We haven't seen him since. Dillard here is sick. I'm not sure how much longer he's going to last. If we're going to help this gentleman find his brother, we're going to need to go quickly. You know, I'm not very good at these types of situations. I mean, as far as we know, there's no help for Dillard, and he's just going to be holding us back. If anything, he's going to turn soon, so maybe we won't have to make that choice. That is true. I fear that he may already be beyond help. I didn't want to say that out loud uh, to his friend, obviously, but let's keep that in the back of our mind. You're saying Wilm, the sick one, is beyond our help already? Dillard's the sick one. Dillard is the sick one. Nerdok is the one that we're talking to, and Wilm is the one who's lost, who's been separated. So I fear that Dillard may be beyond help already, but let's not say that in front of Nerdok. Or Dillard, for that matter? Sh- right, in front of any of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, but if we can assume that he can't be helped... We should just keep that in the back of our minds because there's no telling when he may uh, go bad on us. I think you're right. We should uh, definitely try to go to the location that uh, that Nerdok pointed out. See if we can see Wilm there. Obviously, if he's if he saw lights over there, then there's you know someone there. So uh, if it's Wilm and we can rescue him, then we can hopefully get all three out. And uh, as for Dillard, as for Nerdok, which one's the sick one again? Dillard? Uh, yes. Dillard, D- Dillard is dying. That's how you <laughs> Dillard. can remember. Dillard yeah, is dying. Dillard, Dillard's dying. As for, as for dying Dillard, uh, <laughs> let's, we'll, we'll see what we can do for him. Maybe we'll try our best medicine check on him. Yeah. And if that doesn't work, maybe we'll, uh, make some sort of makeshift, uh, sling or sleigh thing and like drag him mm. behind us, you know, whatever we have to do. Or a cage on wheels. Yes. Or a cage. Or, yeah, whatever we have to do. So that when he turns, we may transport him back home and give yes. uh, evidence of our find to Mr. Clowden. Yes. I'm getting flashbacks from that cage on wheels. Oh, yeah, the uh, adventure, <laughs> yeah. the adventure, whatever it was. Yeah, in one of our D&D games, we uh, created a, a business where we would take commoners out on our adventures with us, and they would get to see firsthand the lives of adventurers, and we'd just fight random monsters and like in the wilds. And we had it like, reinforced with like cage bars so they could watch. So kind of like the Shark Tank equivalent <laughs> yeah, of exactly. adventure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so we got a, got a wagon and had someone reinforce it with steel bars, and we just locked the people in there, and then like, dragged them along behind us, and they paid us to do it, of course. Yeah, and then, a handsome uh, And they watched as we slaughtered things. Yeah. And then we ended up having to, like, travel around to different villages because there weren't enough people who could afford our fee. Or who wanted to pay you. Yeah, because all the right. commoners were poor. <laughs> You want us to pay you <laughs> for what? To, no. <laughs> to put us in a cage. Oh, uh, yeah. It was great. And then I think we had to stop because they're actually, like, the monsters started attacking them. And they were, in, they were actually in grave danger. And we had, like, no insurance policy to make sure that, like, we didn't make them sign a waiver. Or maybe we did. Maybe we actually had waivers that we made them sign. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to say this to you guys in confidence. Uh, because I think it's important that we not um, not uh, dampen their spirits. I'm not very good at these delicate types of matters. I think that uh, I probably should not talk to either of them, <laughs> if possible. Lest you blurt out the fact. Because I'm just, I'm just going to tell yeah. him how it is. Like, Dillard is dying. <laughs> you need to let him go. Let's go find your brother. Yeah. 
<laughs> I imagine you have a different approach. Yeah, we try not to refer to him That's as right. Dying Dillard in mixed right. company. <laughs> Except behind his back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll do the talking. Okay. <clears throat> um, so I will, yeah, I'll, I'll turn around and, um, and say, we've decided to help you. And it has less to do with the fact that we're getting paid for it than because we are good people. I will defer to... And my, we like you. My friend Aslo here. Yes. Yes. We would like to help you in finding Wilm and uh, getting all of you out to safety and di- uh, Dillard to uh, <laughs> a good help, <laughs> too. Yes. Uh, if you'll have us, that is. Well, I could certainly use the help. I assume you know what you're doing and what you're dealing with here? We do. Please, have no reason to doubt us at all. Which is why we advise that Dillard be bound and gagged at once. (laughs) (laughs) So that he does not pose a hazard to the rest of us. If we're going to be up there in that tiny little tower with you, we want to be sure. Now, I I won't actually say that because it's rude. We don't need to go up there, though, right? Well, the rope is still dangling down. You've just kind of ignored it. (laughs) Yeah, and he said that Dillard is in no shape to be climbing. Right, but isn't finding Wilm our first priority? Uh, yeah, I guess. We can just leave him... Both of them can just stay up there until we find Wilm. Otherwise, you know, there's no reason for them to leave. Oh, I would hate to find Wilm and come back and then Murdoch is eaten. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. These whole, like... Think for a second. We need to make camp. Why don't we camp out with them, keep watch, make sure... Diller doesn't change, and if he does change, we can do something about it. He won't eat Murdoch under our nose. Nerdoch mm. with an N. He won't eat Nerdoch <laughs> under our nose. Uh, because Nerdoch is nosy about our motives. <laughs> nosy Nerdoch, dying Dillard. <laughs> yeah. And Wilm is lost. Wait, wait, wait yeah, how do, a, a W word for lost. Wayward Wilm. We, weakling. Yeah, Wayward Wilm. Wait, there we go, Wayward, wayward. Wilm. <laughs> All right, Wayward Wilm, Nerdy Nerdock. No, what was Nerdock? <laughs> nosy. The nosy. Nosy, nosy. Nerdock and Dying Dillard. Yep. Those are our NPCs for this adventure. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we will be uh, camping... Well, it's still afternoon, remember. It's still afternoon. It's probably about one thirty or 2 o'clock. Yeah, the sun will not go down for several hours, so technically we have time to execute this mission before sundown. Now... Nosy Nerdock, do you have a weapon <laughs> on you, perchance? Of course. Are you proficient with that weapon? Obviously. Are you ready to kill with that weapon? If need be. I have done so many times. Oh. Are you willing to kill maybe, uh, I don't know, say, one of your closest kin or loved ones? <laughs> <laughs> Just asking for a friend. I've never had to make that decision. If you were put into such a decision, (laughs) what would your decision be? I wouldn't do it for any amount of money. My friends and family come first. How about your own survival? Let's just put it in those terms. I think I see what you're getting at. (laughs) Yeah, I I kind of... I wanted to ease into it uh, softly, but I feel like there's no real way to do so. Surely you must see... That your good friend is afflicted by the same disease that has caused what you are seeing around you. We can't say that for sure, uh, but I can see that it seems likely. That's why I've kept close watch over him this whole time. Okay. So now let me ask you, if he were to begin exhibiting the same signs, uh, would you be willing to leave his side? If I had no choice. Because we've been instructed to bring you home safely. That's our mission. I want to make sure that if it comes down to it, we will not be facing a situation where you are willing to put yourself at unnecessary risk for, shall we say, for lack of a better term, a lost cause. I understand, and I will do what must be done. Good man. How about this, Nosy? You could (laughs) climb down the rope and uh, basically stay down here and do whatever else you need to do, prepare food, and then basically just go up to check on uh, Dillard every once in a while. And that way, if he turns while you're down here, I mean, he'll probably wake up and then walk off the ledge and, you know, smash his brains anyway. 
You hear another voice shout from behind the wall. Well, that sounds so pleasant, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, crap. I didn't really think about the fact that he was listening. <laughs> it's nothing personal, Dillard. You, I'm sure you're a great guy. You've got really good qualities about you. <laughs> We're just here for the for the greater good. The fact of the matter is, if you turn into a zombie, I will shoot you in the head, and I would expect you to do the same for me. <laughs> I think I would prefer to stay by his side. That's entirely understandable. As long as you're willing to do what's necessary, then we can uh, entrust that to you. Now, if you'll kindly point us in the direction of the last time you saw the lights, uh, we will go and see if we can rescue Wilm after all. Yeah, as a matter of fact, not only the direction, but the exact location where you saw those lights. Well, if you come up here, I could point out the building. Uh, perhaps one of us should climb the rope and go have a look-see. I don't mind doing so, unless somebody else wants to. No, you can go ahead. Okay. Can you tell me that I'm, uh, nice? and good-looking before I go up? Um, it's not that hard to climb. Oh, uh, okay. I, th- I figured a rope would be harder than, <laughs> than a ladder. <laughs> I feel like we're going about Brian's abilities all <laughs> the wrong way. Like, he's supposed to be the cunning, like, coercive one, and we're, like, coercing him into using his ability. Both of us have done that. Well, the reason why is because if in real life somebody could touch you and make you feel self-confident, then, like, I would be, like, I would be wanting that all the time. Especially if I'm about to climb a rope and I'm seven feet tall and I don't know how to climb, and I have to climb thirty <laughs> feet up in the air, and like, I know I could just go crashing to my death. So you would turn to this person and say, "Tell me I'm pretty." Yeah, I would probably be like, "Give me some, <laughs> give me a little boost of self confidence to like, so that I know that I have less chance that I'm going to die." Hmm. I feel, I feel like even in a real world situation, they still wouldn't like <laughs> genuinely want to tell you a compliment if it was asked for. Oh no, no, not that I think that Aslo wants to say that. Just that Shaba, being scared of cl- of height or whatever, not heights, but of climbing a rope, would want that boost of confidence. I'm just curious, just in D and D theory, just in general, if the class of bard is normally badgered by their teammates for, for, <laughs> like hey can you give me a boost usually more out of character yeah yeah certainly a support class so yo yeah what was that that one D movie where they're like they go into combat and the bard keeps dying and then sooner or later there's just a big like stack of them and they're like <laughs> quick hide behind the pile of dead bards <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't think that Brian has, like, handed out one of his abilities genuinely yet. I can't think, I literally, I can't think of an instance where myself or Jay didn't ask for your ability, and it happened. Right at first, yeah. No, I've, I've done it a couple times. Really? Yeah, no, I think the first time or two, it was of his own volition, but then, like, after that... It was like, hey, this is an important role. I feel like that'd be a good plot twist if you were like, no. <laughs> I, I'm feeling uninspired to offer you my aid right now. Right, right. Like, this would be an instance, right? I mean... Well, it doesn't look like a terribly difficult climb, considering that you've got the wall there to brace your feet on, and then once you reach the tower, you've also got its, you know, crosshatch support beams and everything that you can sort of stand on on your way up. All right. Yeah, I, I think I mentioned I saw a build of the of the Goliath race somewhere that climbing was their thing, like their race based uh, ability, mm. because they live in the mountains and they're used to climbing, you know, ravines and all this stuff. But that's not an official thing. So I'll climb the rope and try not to fall and break my neck. All right. Well, I got a nineteen to climb. Climb up. Okay, so yeah, you climb just fine. I'm not going to actually go into the nest. I'm just going to, like, put my feet up on the supports of the tower and look in. Okay, so you're standing on the outside edges of the tower? Yeah. And I'll, I'll uh, offer a handshake. Probably, no, actually, maybe I won't, because disease. <laughs> <laughs> well, who are you offering the handshake? Yeah, well, that's the thing, because Dillard is sick, but uh, Nordstrom, or... Uh, Nerdak. Uh, <laughs> Nerdok. <laughs> no, uh, no. N- Nerdok um, is tending him, so he's got all them germies all over him. And you know all about germs, right? Yeah, exactly. No, I'll I'll give him a handshake because medieval times, we don't know what germs are. Uh, <laughs> and say, uh, 
I'm Shaba, born of Crag and Thunder, son of Pachaka, last of the Davide clan, exile of the Tribe of Rakashan. Of His name is Shaba! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I bid you well, Matt, and I pray the shoulder of the Ram Lord be ever at your back, and uh, we're going to help you out. <laughs> Thank you, Shaba, born of Crag and Thunder. <laughs> I appreciate the introduction. So can you point me to where you saw those lights, the exact building in the city where you saw them? Yes. Um, he turns over uh, opposite you. And it's kind of difficult to pick out a specific building at this distance. But he points and he says it was about half a mile into town. And it was in one of the large buildings near the southeastern section of the wall. That would probably be the easiest approach. Uh, there's a gate nearby? There's a gate over there. He points off to the left. On the east side, you can see another opening. Okay. So just on the other side of that gate, if you followed the wall a little ways, then you'd be able to get close to the building. It's not too far from the wall. All right. Well, that's a bit of a relief. We don't have to venture away too far into town. Okay. Um, we will set off immediately and uh, see what we find. It is much appreciated. He was alive last night, or at least the light was there last night. Uh, pray thee well, Nordic, while we look for your <laughs> Nordic <laughs> Nordic. <laughs> no, nosy Nordstrom Nordic <laughs> uh, And I say, we will see you soon. And then I just let go and slide down the rope. <laughs> Give myself <laughs> rope burns. <laughs> to the ground. You don't have leather gloves or anything? No. <laughs> um, in <laughs> hindsight, I should not have done that. <laughs> okay, so you're down at the bottom, outside... Outside the walls. Did I feel that bad feeling when I went up? You felt it, yeah, as soon as you passed through the crystal area. <sighs> I feel glum, chums. Let's go and uh, investigate. All right, yeah, let's go. On to adventure. All right, yeah, so you continue along the wall. You were coming around clockwise, because you came from the west to the north to the east side. And you reach another probably about a dozen buildings with the gate into town to your right. And you hear some movement to your left along the streets here before the gate. Did you hear that? Indeed. So just to double check, the spot he pointed to was still inside the town limits? Yes, inside the wall. Okay. Yeah. It's maybe you know, a few hundred yards from the wall. And this is the closest gate to that? Yeah. Alright, and if we look to the right where this gate is, it's in similar disrepair to the one that to the gate that we saw when we first got here it's like mangled and torn off its hinges um no the gate is closed and in decent condition it just looks old okay so fully closed like we don't we don't see like there's no chain around it we can't tell whether it's fastened or locked from this distance no you're not sure Okay. All right, let's try to uh, sneak past these ones if we can. Well, which of us is the sneakiest? Mm, I've got roughly a plus four stealth. Uh, I have a plus five. And if one person sneaks by, you all make it? <laughs> <laughs> How about I make sure the coast is clear at the entrance? Sounds good. Because I will alert the zombies, most likely. <laughs> all right. You guys can pull this off. We can certainly try. You also have disadvantage on stealth, don't you? Or your armor? Mm. Yes, I'm very unstealthy. What kind of armor are you wearing? I'm in heavy. Oh, wow. Yeah. 55-pound uh, chain. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that weighs almost as much as and, you. And uh, my... <laughs> exactly. I'm just kind of like waddle <laughs> in it. But uh, and my, my um, bonus to dex is only a plus one, a 13 mm. in dex. And uh, believe it or not, I did not decide to be proficient in stealth. <laughs> mm. So I'll wait here and make sure you guys have a safe passage out once you get him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I suppose that works. Shaba, why don't you lead the way? Well, my natural explorer ability says that I can move stealthily at a normal pace when traveling alone. So why don't we stealth separately so that I can be traveling alone? Okay. Okay, so Shaba takes the lead and tries to sneak past the zombies first. Yes. I got a 14. B with the plus bonus? Mm-hmm. I only rolled a 9. Guess I need to see what their perception is. Zombies can't be that perceptive, right? <laughs> I mean, they're like yeah. zombies. 
They don't notice things. <laughs> Unless they're like, you know, zombies from... What, what was that movie with Will Smith? Oh, yeah. Like, those zombies were kind I'm of legend, like... I'm legend, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Good job. Well, we're, we're going to start a, a movie review podcast <laughs> after right. this one. Yeah, definitely. You sneak on through, and as you go around a couple of the corners on the buildings, you see three or four of them spread around down the street a little ways, wandering in and out of one of the buildings. They don't seem to have spotted you. I will slowly turn back to Aslo and give him the high sign, give him the signal. I see four zombies that way down the street without speaking, <laughs> without saying a word. I wave back. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will make my stealth check. Okay. So they're only like 80 feet away from you or so? From me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you said these zombies are down a side street that I see when I come to the corner of the building? Uh, no, you're coming in on a side street, so they're actually down the main street opposite the gate. Okay. Is there anything I can add to my stealth check other than my stealth check? <laughs> no. Uh, okay. And you can't barge yourself, can you? No, I cannot. Uh, that would be <clears throat> a six. I, I trip over my own toe hairs. And, uh, <laughs> You're like clunking like pots and pans. And I try to give you like Goliath inspiration. I turn back and give you two thumbs up. And I'm like, great job. You're doing wonderful. <laughs> I get the uh, the scent of stripey in my nose. And then as I'm sneaking, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> and I sneaked <laughs> And I look over at the zombies And, like, and then I look back at, at Tokus And Shala And I'm just like looking around all scared You see two of them turn towards you Blood dripping from their mouths And <laughs> slavering Exposed bones and rotted Pieces of flesh falling from them And start moaning a little bit louder <laughs> As they shuffle forward Aslo, no <laughs> The Damage Guild Podcast, recommended by four out of five eldritch abominations. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name's Jay Stout. I play Shabba Dabba Day, the Goliath Ranger with a heart of gold. And I also sometimes play his faithful badger and friend till the end, Stripey. I'm just here to say hello, to thank you for listening, uh, to thank you for all the feedback and support. We really do want to know how we're doing. So if you haven't already, even though I know it's a pain, we would super duper appreciate it if you could leave us a review on your favorite podcast distributor. Visit us on Facebook, facebook.com slash damage guild. Visit our website, thedamageguild.com. Tell a friend, hey, make a mixtape uh, of your favorite damage guild episodes and give it to a friend who's feeling down. I mean, we're not going to judge the fact that you still have a cassette player. Anything you can do, any little thing, uh, it really makes a huge difference. Being a fledgling podcast, we're relying entirely on word of mouth to get the word out about the show, and we really appreciate everything that you've done so far. We're stoked to have you hanging out with us. We're going to have a lot of fun, and we can't wait for what's next. We'll see you for our next episode, um, episode six, next Monday. Now, let's jump back into it. You are listening to the Damage Guild Podcast. What if we go and stand on the other side of the barrier and let the zombies approach us and see what happens? Because Tokus did bring up that point earlier about how we didn't hang around long enough to test out what the barrier actually does, if anything. Mm -hmm. Of course, if it doesn't do anything, then we're just standing there and there's a bunch of zombies right next to us. So <laughs> It has to do something. You'd think so, right? Like, the world almost exploded when I started stealing them. Remember the crystals? Yeah, yeah. It, like, got unstable and stuff. Yeah, so I, is it keeping the zombies in, or is it like... Or out, or both. I don't know. Is it keeping mm -hmm. the out zombies out and the in zombies in? Well, we were able to walk through it. Yeah. But it affects us, though, is the other thing. Right. It may have a different effect on undead than on the living. Yeah. Aslo and Shaba, the two of you, could just turn right and run straight past them and probably outrun them. But that leaves Tokus out there alone, like 100 <laughs> feet or so behind you, down a side street, without an easy way in. <laughs> okay, if that zone, that magical zone, 
is only 10 feet outside the gate, then if we just go up to the gate, then we're going to have nowhere to run. (laughs) (laughs) So why don't we do that? Why don't we go over the gate? That way, when the zombies reach the zone, we have at least some physical barrier in between us. I don't know if you guys are small enough to squeeze, probably not Tokus because of the armor, but Aslo maybe. I don't know if you're small enough to squeeze through the bars. Maybe not. Hmm. Uh, Judging from the gate on the other side, no. Okay. The bars are like five inches apart. And we've already gauged Aslo's um, lockpicking skills as being subpar at best. Decidedly. When he tried to jam that <laughs> dagger into, <laughs> into the lock. All right, well, you're running out of time to discuss all uh, Yeah, I was going to say, not to interrupt you, Jay, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> either these are some really slow zombies or they're almost upon you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think the best thing to do, actually, is Tokus, for you get out of sight. Okay, so I'm going to hide. Let these zombies pass you by and we will uh, we'll draw their attention. Okay, uh, I look around. Uh, what do I see that I could hide in thing? Uh, there's a few houses nearby. They're all just kind of run-down shacks. There's no, like, nobody left out their trash or something? I could, like, jump in a trash can? <laughs> <laughs> um, you see an old wheelbarrow next to one of the buildings. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go hide in the wheelbarrow. Just jump in on top and crouch down low? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't want to upset the balance. I mean, like, wheelbarrows, you kind of have to... Yeah. You know, yeah. All right, I will crouch down and take a three-point stance like a defensive lineman, and I'll turn around to you and say, run, jump on my back. Okay. Um, I think Aslo sort of, like, panics a little bit. Uh, But, yeah, he'll go ahead and run over and jump on his back. When you start running, you look behind you, and you see that the other two zombies have also noticed after all of that shouting and (laughs) commotion. And so they've started moving towards you as well. Okay, so that's that's a question for you. Are these, like... um, are these like the Walking Dead zombies, or are they like... Uh, Don't say they're 28 Days Later zombies, because... Yeah, yeah, I Am Legend, or like 28 Days Later zombies. What speed are we talking here? They're shamblers, right? Yeah, they're shambling. They're moving along in a okay. slow walk. Yeah. Or like that, that one... Uh, do you remember that one movie we watched, Jay, where the, the zombies like picked up machine guns and <laughs> started what? shooting them? Uh, it was the worst. Oh, dude. Uh, was that like one of the do- the dawn or day of the dead? I can't remember. It was, yeah, I think I... I don't remember. They were like un- in this like underground military base or something, and then they they came upon the zombies who already had guns in their hands, and they were just like, oh, do, 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 started like oh, firing dude, at them. That's really terrible. It was terrible. the worst. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my god. So I'm assuming they're not like that. <laughs> but yeah, they just take out Gatling guns. Hasla, what are these guns you speak of? <laughs> You'll learn about it when you're older. Oh, okay. In, in you know, a few thousand years. Um, okay, so we run over there. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that I'm basically just, like, have my little arms wrapped around your tree trunk-like neck, mm-hmm. um, Shaba. And I will say, um, Shaba, your chin is like the face of a mountain cliff Whoa. and give you uh, <laughs> thank you give you some bardic inspiration <laughs> I, re- I really like that that compliment really got me down in the deep place in my heart hey hey man you have 10 minutes to use it so <laughs> whatever should, you want to do we should all aspire to have our chins look like the crags of a mountainside <laughs> uh, and I carry Stripey to the gate and let him um squeeze through the bars while I climb over with you on my back. Go go get help, Stripey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go, little Unlock buddy. the gate from the other side. <laughs> am, I, am I just watching this all happen, this transpire? <laughs> so Aslo's riding on your back. Yeah. Now that said, Tokus, if you also wanted to run, I can't guarantee that I will be able to hold both of you on my back while I climb. Hmm. <laughs> but hmm. I do count as one size category larger. Uh, which is something that I forgot previously. I count as a large creature when it comes to lifting and carrying stuff. Which means you count as two categories larger than both of us. Because that's... we're both small creatures. Oh, that's right. You're small. Okay. Yeah. Well, small doesn't affect your weight allowance. Yeah, Tokus is carrying heavy armor. He's wearing heavy armor, so... Oh, yeah, yeah that's true. Yes, but still, the, uh, yeah, the fact that we're small and lightweight. Mm-hmm. You reach the gate, and you can see the zombies are about 80 feet behind you at this point you've put some distance between you and Tokus, you see them pass by on the main street just peeking out from the wheelbarrow so you see four of them walk by in two little groups. Wait, I actually like look up and like 
<laughs> that seems risky. <laughs> you're like the wheelbarrow is like filled with mulch, and your just like head pops out of the little mulch pile. <laughs> Wheelbarrows aren't typically all that deep, so I think you're yeah. probably not completely concealed under the rim anyway. Mm. So you can just kind of see out the edge. I just hope that I blend in. I close my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> if I can't see them, they can't see me. <laughs> Be one with the wheelbarrow. <laughs> When you get to the gate, uh, Shaba, you notice that it doesn't seem chained shut or anything. It seems like it's just closed, not necessarily locked. Oh, okay. All right, then I'll try to Hmm. swing it open a crack, just a little bit. And it it moves freely? It moves. It's rusty, so it's a little bit tough, but (coughs) easy enough for you to move. Okay, does it swing inward or outward? Outward. Okay. So I will open it and then step inside with Stripey and Aslo, and then pull it to a close. And I don't think I have anything on my person that could fasten this gate. Do you, Aslo? I shrug, I like let you down to the ground and ask if you have anything in your pack that we might use as a temporary fastener. Okay, you got about 20 seconds before they get to you. Quick, quick! He's like rifling through his pack. Quick, look! look fast. <laughs> Let's see. What do I have here? Hmm... We could, uh, you could slide my rapier through from the bars into the side of the door, but that's about it. Uh, yeah, I don't want to damage your swords. Okay, all right, we'll just, we'll just hold it closed and actually make sure it stays closed and we'll back off a few feet from the gate with our weapons out and wait for them to reach the barrier. Okay, so you, he searches through his bag for a few seconds and you just close the gate and back up? Yes. With weapons out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, the zombies do pass through the barrier. (sighs) Mm -hmm. Shucks. You don't see any obvious effects that it has on them, but you barely feel it yourself. It's just kind of vague in the background. Okay. So we're we're getting used to it, like uh, Nerdok said. Yeah. You do still feel it if you think about it. Okay. Well, it's either I take a shot when they pass through the barrier, or we continue running into the city toward the building. Regroup, maybe get some help from the brothers? Yeah. Or brother? Brother, yeah. Um, not knowing how Tokus is, though. Well, he doesn't know anything about your situation. I've already got a plan, don't worry about me. (laughs) You guys just make it out. We might be concerned that you could be in danger out there. But there's nothing you can do, is there? I mean, think about it. Yeah, I guess not really. I mean, the zombies are going to have to figure out how to open the gate before they get to us, so we may have a little time to run. What do you What do you think, Aslo? Um, <clears throat> remember how long it took us to kill one yeah. zombie? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> remember that? Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't really like our odds too much. I say we run. Yeah, we can definitely outdistance them, so I'm all right with that. All right, so I take Aslo, un- I just grab him, and I take him under one <laughs> arm, and then I take Stripey under my other arm, and I just, whoa, 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 <laughs> lumber off <laughs> toward that building. So in the general direction of your target, the missing brother. Right, the building that he showed us. Okay, Tokus, the zombies passed by 30 seconds ago. Are you doing anything? I'm holding my breath. <laughs> <laughs> I would be too. And very discreetly observing the zombies. Well, you can't see them now because they just passed down the main street and out of sight. Oh, okay. You did hear uh, the sound of rusty metal moving a couple of times off in the distance. Okay, so I'm probably thinking to myself, like, okay, good, they got away. Whew. Now how am I going to get out of this mess? <laughs> okay, but you're just sitting there for now? Oh yeah, I'm planning, I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> so, for Shaba and Aslo, as you're running, you hear the moaning just kind of everywhere around you in the city. Oh, crap. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> Although I can stealth at full speed, remember? Mm. I'm very good at stealthing. Matter of fact, I am stealthing. Let's just get that out of the way. I'm stealthing. <laughs> <laughs> So you proceed for a little while down the main street, and it'll be a few more side streets, and then you'll turn to the left if you want to reach the building that you're aiming for. I do. I would I would definitely like to get where we're going. <laughs> you see on some side roads off in the distance a couple of groups of zombies. Oh, no, they're going to close in, man. They're going to see us and close in and just, like, fill this main street and <laughs> cut off our escape route. I can see it now. Uh, that's not good. Well, we came here to find the Strathus brothers and dying Dillard, so that's what we're gonna do, and we'll we'll worry about the consequences later. Um, so, how many groups of zombies have we seen exactly? Uh, you've passed two more that you saw down the side streets. Okay, 
running as fast as you are, you couldn't quite count them all, but you think there's probably like another six or so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I figure any number of zombies greater than a half a dozen, it pretty much doesn't matter because they're going to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Asla, you also could see that the zombies made it through the gate. It took them a minute or so to actually open it, but they did come through. Okay. Now, Shaba's been sneaking this whole time. Um, as far as we know, the only zombies actually chasing us are the ones we've seen. The one from the first group and then the two on the side streets. Uh, you don't know if the side street ones really noticed you, because you just saw them for a second. Okay. Tokus, are you going to do anything? Are you still sitting there? Panicked. <laughs> I thought I had a plan, and now I'm not so sure about said plan. You did hear the gate opening and again, not closing. Really? Yeah. Hmm. See, because I would have guessed the first gate had something to do with my friends. Second gate, that's that's worrisome. Right. What does that mean? Are the gate, like, do the zombies, like, all of a sudden know how to use a door? I mean, <laughs> I mean, did it sound like a gate opening and closing, I think, is the important... Like, what was the sound precisely? You could probably figure out that it's gate or something similar. But you didn't hear it opening and closing. You just heard a couple of squeaks, possibly just opening. So Shab and I were running down the main road of the town from this entrance? Yeah. And there's sort of like buildings scattered on, scattered on each side, that kind of thing? Yeah, it's fairly densely packed with buildings. Okay. Um, I say softly up to Shaba, I say, turn turn left here, quick. Are you sure that's the right direction? Uh, just trust me, trust me, just do it. Okay, because according to my natural explorer ability, the party cannot become <laughs> lost except by magical means. <laughs> yes, oh, that's great. Just do it, trust me. Uh, okay, I, I do it. <laughs> you do know that one of these lefts will lead you to the building. Yeah, so since he's carrying me under his arm, I'm, like, in the meantime, rummaging around in my pack, and I pull out my loot, and um, I, like, start plucking a few strings and humming a little bit. <laughs> I cast Silent Image and create an image of Shaba, but he runs the other direction across the, the street towards Ooh. the other... Uh, so, like, we banked left, um, I make, create an image of Shaba, and then he runs across the street towards the other alley. I'm, like, running. I'm like, I told you jamming on the road was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The illusionary Shaba runs into an opposite alley, and then you don't know whether that worked or not because you can't see behind you. <laughs> but uh, listening ahead, you hear that the moaning is getting noticeably louder as you continue walking down this alley. Mm. Yep. Are they row row houses, or are the buildings completely separate from each other? It's kind of a mix. There's several attached buildings, and then like maybe two or three that are attached together, and then it'll be a space for one bigger one, and then... Okay. I say, put me up on the roof of this house. How do I do that? <laughs> you want me to throw you? <laughs> I don't know. You're tall. <laughs> Can you reach up really high? Uh, most of the buildings are two or three stories tall. Oh, rats. Yeah. Well, as you reach the next street over... You see the building that you're aiming for, but it's surrounded by several dozen, at least, of these zombies. Oh, crap. Uh, are there other buildings around that one? There's adjacent buildings, but that one is a standalone. It's three stories tall, a large building, a few houses nearby on either side. Okay. My objective is to get us into a building that's close enough connected to the one that he is potentially in that we can get up high and we can start calling his name and figure out hmm. whether he's in there, whether he's still human, you know, uh, we just make contact. And I want to be close enough to that building to do that. Like a set of stepping stones, basically. I mean, are you planning to just Robin Hood an arrow <laughs> with a rope? Do you want to be on the same side of the street then? Yes. Same side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same side of the street. Now, if I look behind us, do we see the zombies still coming, or does it seem like the distraction worked? Uh, you don't see any of them behind you. Okay. Tokus, you don't hear any nearby zombies. I'm like, okay, coast is clear. And I, I, I will quietly vacate the wheelbarrow, and uh, <laughs> I'm going to make it towards slowly, as stealthily as a rock gnome can, the gate. The other option would be to attach spikes to the front of the wheelbarrow and use it as a battering ram. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I could fashion those. The other other option would be to attach bells to the wheelbarrow and serve as a distraction <laughs> for us. <laughs> well, I don't know what situation you guys are in yet. I think we do need to reconvene. You move forward, and when you get to the main street, you turn to the side and you don't see any zombies around. Uh, the gate is open on one side. Hmm. I bet that was them. 
So I'll, I'll kind of follow those clues, I guess. The gate, like the direction it's open, maybe it gives me a hint as to which direction they went. You never saw the building that they were trying to get towards? And I, I can't see said building from here. I mean, that's what I'm looking for. I bet that's where they're going. Right, you never saw the building to begin with. Only Shaba did. You have a general idea of where it is, because you talked about it. Does he see groups of zombies flooding in from those side streets that we passed and moving in that direction? Because that would be a clue for him. Obviously, that's out of character <laughs> for us, but for him, that's a clue. <laughs> <laughs> you see there are a few zombies moving away from you. Quite a ways down the main street. But they're they're obviously they're facing away from me, they're looking that way. Right. I could probably sneak in that direction. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna go down Main Street. Okay. They're gonna lead me to my companions, I bet. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Beat them at their own game. Okay. While you're doing that, Shavo and Aslo, you move towards one of the buildings. How close are you going to get to the horde of zombies before you deem it close enough? I don't need to be right next to the building that he's in. I just want to be connected to it in some way, shape, or form. I want the buildings in between us to be as close together as possible. And if I don't have to get close to the zombies to do that, then we'll enter a building and try to barricade the door. About three houses down, it seems like the buildings are close enough that you might be able to, you know, go from one to the next somehow. Probably about eight to twelve feet apart. Okay. So, you enter one house and there's two buildings between you with a group of three houses or something that are all one unit and then space and then another group. And so you just entered the first structure in that line. And then the target, which, judging from the signs on the front, looks like an old smithy or weapon or armor shop, possibly. All right, that's what we're going for. Okay, so we get inside, we shut this door. Uh, it, it may or may not have a lock that we can engage. There's a front door, there's a back door, two front windows, and the doors do have simple latches. Any tall furniture will... Uh, put those over the windows. Sounds good. That will take priority with like the dressers, cabinets, um, hutches, anything like that will go over the windows. Anything smaller, chairs, like we'll wedge them underneath the, the door handle. We basically just want to make the first floor as secure as possible so that once we start yelling and they figure out that we're in here, it's going to take them as <laughs> long as it can to get in. I'll help out with a small piece of furniture here and there, but uh, as uh, Shaba is doing one of the bigger pieces by himself, I'll kind of have a moment of realization, and then I will turn and sort of like try to guess to the best of my ability the direction we came from, and I'll point in that direction, and I will attempt to whisper a message to uh, Tokus using... Message. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> what is the range on that? Uh, 120 feet. So I don't know if he's in range, but I'll try it anyway. So as I'm upturning beds and like pushing these heavy cabinets into the way, Aslo's sitting there like, he's like, I'll help with this ottoman, you know, like, yeah. I'm like, okay, <laughs> just go upstairs, just take Stripey upstairs, get as high up as you can. I will secure this area. See if, I don't know if you can climb out under the roof, look out a, a top floor window, see if you can see the building that Wilm is potentially in. Um, once I'm done with this, I'll follow you upstairs. Sounds good. So yeah, I, I run upstairs and, and take that opportunity to try to cast message and um, I'll just whisper, Tokus, if you can hear me, we've made our way close to the building that we think Wilm is in. It's a tall building. Uh, you know, you go in straight and then you like turn left and it's somewhere in there. It's tall and brown and it has windows and doors. Yes. <laughs> And so if he's in range, he has a chance to, he would hear me and have a chance to whisper back. Do you know if it works or not? Yeah. Does the spell tell you whether it reaches him? No, it doesn't really say. I, so I suppose the only way I would know is if he responds. You don't hear a response. Okay. And Tokus, you don't get the message. Mm, too far away. <laughs> all right. So once I've uh, used all up all the furniture, made it as secure as I can, I will go up the stairs. Now, are there two floors or three floors in this house? Uh, this one has two stories. Okay. I don't have, like, a big, heavy weapon, do I? You could craft something out of stone. <laughs> <laughs> I could. If I had a big stone, I could very well do that. Do the stairs go straight up to the second floor, or is there, like, a landing? They're just against the side. They go straight up. I'm going to go halfway up the staircase, and then I'm going to attempt to pry up two of the stairs using my knife and or my hand. I just want to rip up like two steps. 
Okay, give me strength check. Uh, that's a 13. I don't think that would be enough to pull up a floorboard. Okay. I'm going to try a different stair. Uh, this time I got a 15. You feel some of the nails starting to come loose, but you don't manage to pull it out yet. All right. I'll shove my knife under there and try to wiggle it from side to side and just basically just keep trying to... Yeah, and I'm just looking out any windows I can find to get a sense of where we are, see if I can see the entrance we came in, see if I can see the big building. If you look out one of the front windows and kind of turn to the side, you have to poke your head out and turn, then you can just see the building that you're aiming for. I'll come down and report that to Shaba then. Okay. Uh, any sign of Tokus? Nope. Um, I will try to help him lift the floorboard. I'm not sure what's going on, but I'll give you a hand. <laughs> I just want to create a gap that I can step over, but that may trip up the zombies if they get inside. Okay. So if we work together, both using our daggers, we'll pry out, you know, I guess three, three stairs would be safe. And then I'll lift Aslo over the gap and then step over it myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if you just take the tops off the stairs, they still have the front part. Right, right. So we'll take off the tops of three and the front of one and leave it like that. Okay, the staircase is very rickety after you've done all that. Okay. It barely supports your weight. <laughs> all right. We should definitely set up some, like, home alone traps and, you know, step on one floorboard and a big, like, boulder comes rolling down the stairs. Whoa! Yeah, some swinging paint cans on ropes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just clock them in the noggin. <laughs> so we go to the second story. And standing in front of the window, I consult with Aslo before we take this course of action, but I say, what do you think about yelling Wilm's name? Hmm. Let's see. And or climbing out onto the roof before we do that. Let's, hmm. Yeah, let's see if we can climb up onto the roof first. I think that's going to give us a much better vantage point, a much clearer idea of what's going on. Okay. So, I guess to climb out, I just sit on the window ledge and pull myself out and reach up. Okay, you want to give me your athletics check to try to climb on top? I mean, I, I don't really want to, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, that's a 14. So, you lean outside, you can reach up, you're tall enough that you can just kind of grab onto the top of the roof. And these are mostly flat roofs. Oh, okay, well, that's good. Yeah, decent place to stand on top. It's not quite flat, but just slightly sloped instead of, like... Like super steep. Okay. All right, I'll pull myself up. I will lie down and then reach my arm down. And, uh... How do we... Okay, Aslo, do you have rope? Nope. Dang it. Do I have rope? <laughs> I don't think I, I... I really didn't bring any equipment. <laughs> Wait, neither of you guys have hemp and rope? No. I I could probably string my... A couple of my costumes together to form a makeshift <laughs> rope. Oh, here we go. I have an idea. Find one of the beds and get take the sheet off of it. Okay. And then use it as a springboard to launch myself out the window? <laughs> yes, exactly. No, use it as a parachute to jump out the window oh, and land <laughs> where all the zombies are down there. Um, no, Great we're gonna, idea. We're going to use it as a, uh, uh, a sling uh, to hold Stripey in. Okay. <laughs> so that we can lift him up as well. So you're going to like lay the sheet out, have Stripey stand in the center of it. You'll wrap him up. He's not going to like it, but <laughs> just just tell him to shut up and deal with it. <laughs> uh, you'll ra wrap him up in it, and then as I lift you up onto the roof, you'll hold on. Okay. And then I'll grab the sheet and pull Stripey up after us. I'll run into the house and see if I can find a, a spare blanket. Okay. So you are looking for a sheet. So, Tokus, you've been following the zombies at a safe distance, and some of them kind of shuffle off into an alleyway to the north. That's my chance. <laughs> so now I'm going to sneak by <laughs> the alley. As you pass by, you see there are five or six zombies walking down the alleyway. Can I see the tall building yet? No, you'd only really be able to see it if you were on a roof somewhere, maybe, or if you're in one of the towers or something. Okay, then I'm going to keep going, hoping that I'm going the right way. So you continue down the main street for a little while past the alley, and you get to a point where the street turns just a little bit, and you can see up ahead of you, uh, there is a group of zombies that have been defeated by someone or other. Uh, to the left, you see one of the buildings that is surrounded by a group of zombies just down the alleyway. Oh, that's not good. Hmm. That's probably where they are. 
Um, I probably can't sneak by them if they're all clustered like that, can I? Probably not. Okay, well, I was saving this for a special occasion, but uh, I think it's necessary here. So, um... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of check the scenery, though, first. I want to make sure... Uh, I'm going to look around and see if there's anything else for me to hide behind. There's a couple of wagons and carts, hand carts. All right, perfect. So I want to sneak over to that cart. I'm going to get in the cart, and I'm going to reach in, uh, in, my, in my backpack, and I'm going to fish out my music box. <laughs> and like, kind of like a grenade, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open the music box, so that's when it starts playing, <laughs> like... And I'm gonna, I'm gonna like toss it, like or slide it. I guess I don't want it to break, so I'm gonna slide it along the as far as I can throw it along the uh, um, street, maybe into like an alley or something. And which direction? It's a sound bomb uh, away from where I need to go. Brilliant. Okay, so the main street goes essentially east to west, and the south street has all of the zombies gathered around the building. There is another street to the north, but it's a lot smaller. This little alleyway. That's probably where I should throw the music box. Because I want them to... I just, I'm just trying to do a little misdirection here. I'm thinking. I'm thinking, like, I want them to go that way. Because <laughs> I need to go this way, right? Is that what you're saying to me? You want to head south. Mm-hmm. And the zombies are crowded around... Around a building to the south. Okay. Uh, why, don't, why don't I divert them, uh, I guess... Why don't I throw the music box as far as I can down the street to the west... Like gently, like skid it, like like skidding rocks. I don't want this thing to break on the way there. Like I just want to slide it. Give me a dexterity check. Slide music box check <laughs> down the cobblestone street. Yeah, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. Okay, I got a six. Okay, so you open up the music box. You try to chuck it down the street. It bounces a few times and only makes it about twenty-five feet from where you are in the cart and it's still playing oh I'm sure it is uh, I'm screwed at this point aren't I I'm sure it is I built that thing like a tank well <laughs> am I close enough to the mainstream maybe this will do what I wanted to do anyway is it loud enough I mean it's a, it's a, it's a pretty awesome music box <laughs> I, I, I guess I'm going to have to leave this up to you, Thane. Like, what happens? Because I, I can't interact anymore. Like, if I do anything I'm screwed. So I'm going to hide and I'm just going to let this play out. <laughs> okay. So you can hear some of them starting to move towards you, but I'm assuming you're not looking anymore because you don't want to be seen. No, I'm hiding. So let's go back to the other two. <laughs> so uh, you find a sheet and you make a handle animal <laughs> to try to grab Stripey. <laughs> animal handling. Uh, let's see. That would be a nine minus one, eight. <laughs> I'm like, come here, come on, come on, little buddy. Stripey is rather uncooperative. <laughs> oh, boy. I try to just throw the sheet over him and snag him in it and wrap him up. <laughs> okay. You see his claws start tearing several small holes in the sheet. <laughs> it. Quick, quick, come I'm on. like, good enough. And I run toward the window. <laughs> I'm like, here, take my hand. <laughs> okay, you can't actually reach each other unless you're standing on the windowsill. Yikes. Uh, I will do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm lying down on the roof, reaching down with my arm. Um, how tall are the ce- were the ceilings inside, out of curiosity? Probably a little less than eight feet. All right. Uh, so I pull Aslo up while Aslo's holding onto the sheet and try to pull Stripey up before he tears a hole through the sheet and falls. <laughs> okay. By the time you pull him up there, he's managed to cut a large enough piece that he can poke his head out, but he hasn't yet jumped. <sighs> I grab him and hold him in tight, and I'm like, Stripey, Stripey, calm down. Calm down. Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. You're going to be okay. All right, little buddy. He calms down some. All right. Now, I'm going to open this sheet and let you go, but you have to promise not to walk off the edge of the roof, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Just chill out. Everything's going to be fine. I know it's a long way to the ground, but... Is, is this subtitles? Like, you're speaking in Badger right now, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying all that to Stripey. <laughs> so you're on top of the roof now, and uh, the crowd of zombies, which you can just kind of see some of them from where you are on the side of the roof here, looks like some of them are starting to disperse and head down another street. Mm. Yes! <laughs> Tokus, you hear some zombies passing within a few feet of where you're lying in your cart. I try not to make a sound. I keep my voice... Actually, I'm not talking. (laughs) Why am I talking right now? (laughs) Why am I talking to myself? No, um, like I'm not even breathing. I'm just like... (gasps) 
<laughs> Can Aslo and I make perception checks or is it too far away to for us to be well if i guess if the zombies can hear then we should be able to hear right you should just make the check you shouldn't <laughs> strong arm the game master into information <laughs> yeah to either hear the music or to see tokus to hear the music is what i was thinking i'll let you make a perception check but you are still about 200 feet from the zombies eight minus one is seven uh i got a 20 I got a 16 plus 4. So you can just barely hear carrying on the wind a few notes now and then uh, that sound like metallic clinking. I recognize that tinkling song anywhere. (laughs) Tokus is nearby. I sense him. In my Goliath pebbles that are protruding from my skin, (laughs) I can can sense the nearness of Tokus because we both love rocks. I whisper up to him, that's weird. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we both love rocks, so with the little tiny rocks in my body, I can sense other rock lovers. <laughs> it's a special ability that I just developed. We cross over to the other side of the roof and try to scan out for him. You can't see him from where you are. You do see that all the zombies seem to be going down one particular street. Several of them, at least, have been led away that direction, but there's still a pretty large group in front of the one building. Perhaps we should use the bed sheet to light a signal fire on the roof of this house. <laughs> Wouldn't that uh, draw the zombies to us? Yes. How far is the next house over? About nine feet. Is that something you can jump, Shaba? Yeah, definitely. I've jumped nine feet in my sleep before when I was up in the (laughs) mountains. Sometimes I would sleep jump, as a matter of fact. All right. Let's light a uh, signal fire and then make the jump. Hopefully by the time any zombies notice the fire and come over here, we will already be on the other roof. You know, that's not to say that I can make that jump while carrying you and Stripey. I need my arms Mm. to be able to, like, catch myself. So if I can do that jump, then I'm going to have to go alone, unfortunately. I actually don't know if I can make that jump or not. With a 10-foot run, you can jump a distance equal to your strength. However, the roof being slightly sloped makes it awkward to run, so you'd probably have to roll an acrobatics to not slip off the roof first since you're running down the slope towards the edge. This seems like a really crucial roll you're about to make, because if you fall... I'm not entirely convinced (laughs) that I'm about to make it. I mean, make the roll. I don't really know if I want to jump. I was thinking once we got up here that we would just yell for Wilm and try to make visual contact with him outside of a, a window or something. But now I'm not so sure. I feel like we're we're missing some tools that are really awesome that we, we have in our arsenal <laughs> that we tried to use earlier for the wrong purpose. That you used earlier for the wrong purpose? No, I'm not, no I, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I did everything I was supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> so your, your spell, Brian, is that only allied characters you can speak with no i can do it to others but i was at least at this point assuming that it was more than that second building was more than 120 feet away it looks a little bit farther than your message goes it's probably about 150 feet i can probably throw you a pretty good distance (laughs) if the next building over is row houses then you have a a long landing strip i'm almost positive Mm. i can throw you more than 10 feet so i throw you over the next building you walk to the edge of that one and you're definitely within range to message him Hmm. okay i like that plan i'm gonna have you make an athletics check it shouldn't be too hard but you will have to make a check i'll spend another use of bardic inspiration uh, on shaba I'd say that's a wise use of that (laughs) skill. (laughs) I say, for the sake of my life, I agree. All right, a 20. (laughs) With a 20, you definitely can throw him. You land, kind of tumble a little bit across the roof. And stand up at the end with my arms outstretched (laughs) and take a bow. I mean, I was even assuming that I would throw you easily and then you would just take damage by landing. And Well, you don't have to say that. (laughs) Um, Let's let's move on. (laughs) And similarly, you can jump... I will make you make an acrobatics check if you jump, just to not slip off the roof. But it'll be similarly easy. I'm not sure that I want to leave Stripey yet. He weighs almost nothing, so you could easily carry him. Okay. Uh, Well, for now, I'll stay here. Go ahead and uh, send that message and let me know what happens. Yeah, I'll go ahead and get close as close as I need to, and then uh, try the spell again. So I point and say, Wilm, if you can hear me. I'm here to to rescue you, and if you can hear this, all you have to do is whisper back, and I'll hear you. He whispers back, 
Brains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't get a response back. Okay. I look over at Shaba and do the, the old... Um, I just I just shake my head. No. You do see that the zombie crowd in front of the building has gotten noticeably smaller. There's still probably 30 or 40 there. Huh. But the others have been shuffling down the alleyway. Away from our position? Yes. Yeah, I don't think of 30 or 40 as small. <laughs> yeah. In order to not um, draw undue attention to ourselves, I will cast message again, but this time going to, to Shaba. I'll tell him uh, I couldn't get through to him, but uh, let's let's try for my other plan. I'll cause a distraction from here. I think I can draw almost all the zombies away. Then you start jumping. How's that sound? Okay, so yeah, this does say that when you make a long jump, you cover a number of feet up to your strength score, if you move at least 10 feet. So you're saying that I can jump the distance, I just have to make an acrobatics check to not slip on the roof, because it's slanted. So the actual jumping won't be a problem for me. Right. All right, well, I feel a little bit better about that. Okay, Tokus, there's a considerable group of them that you can hear just over the edge of the cart surrounding the music box, it sounds like. Okay, so I I feel it's safe enough for me to poke my head up and actually get, like, a real gauge on things, (laughs) so I will take a look. Okay, as you look out, you see... There's more than a dozen zombies that are all just kind of gathered around the music box. Some of them have come down in front of it, and looks like one of them's hitting it with his hand, trying to see what it is or something. And the others are all looking in that same direction. Okay, so they're clearly distracted by the box. Yes, none of them are looking at you right now. Okay, so... And it looks like no more are coming, but there are still several <clears throat> that you can see around the other building. I mean, if it looks like a good opportunity for me to sneak by in the direction I was trying to go, I think I should go for it. You want to roll your self-check or you want me to do it? No, I got it. Disadvantage with your armor. Right, so I'm going to roll two and pick the lesser of the... Oh, that sucks. (laughs) Because my first roll was a 21. Ugh. My second roll was a four plus one. Five. <laughs> yeah, disadvantage usually sucks. Oh, no. Maybe I'm going to turn to the distraction you need. <laughs> you slowly pull yourself over the edge and set down next to the cart. doesn't look like they've seen you yet. You take a few steps and you accidentally kick like a metal pail. Rusty can. <laughs> and you see three or four of them turn towards you. Yeah, that's not good. I'm going to make a break for it. <laughs> okay, so you just start running down the alleyway. In that case, your stealth goes out the window, and <laughs> uh, Aslo, you hear clanging from up the alleyway up ahead that all the zombies just went down. So I'll, uh, I'll scoot over to that edge of the roof and see him running, and I'll immediately, in a flash of inspiration, I'll pull an object out of my bag, and it's this large object, and it's got several long pipes on it, and a big bag attached to it and I will (laughs) blow into it and it sounds a little something like this (laughs) you get points for creativity (laughs) it's a beautiful song those things are so loud by the way bagpipes oh my gosh so you hear that noise as you're rounding the corner onto the street with all the other zombies which are now looking at the noise Wait, looking at the noise? What? Looking in the direction of the noise? The commotion, you mean? Yeah, so none of them seem to even be drawn to your clanging sound that you're making as you run down the alleyway because of how loud this (laughs) flaring (laughs) instrument is. Okay, so maybe I can go back to sneaking? Like, (gasps) they didn't notice me. Uh, There's still the ones behind you that are moving towards you. Well, okay, obviously I have to try to sneak around the one... I can't sneak anymore, I guess. I'm just going to (laughs) run. I'm just going to go for it. Yeah, in other words, just get out of dodge. Yeah. Well, if they're if they're not moving towards me, the ones that I'm moving towards, they're not going to converge, they're not going to, like, sandwich me. Maybe I can, like, scurry, like, you know, nutmeg. <laughs> yeah, the, the idea is once they can't see you anymore, they also can't hear you. So right. my, my thought was get out of sight, and that way they'll, they'll just be drawn to me. Yeah, but I still have the, those few trailing me. Yeah, so you... Yeah. You emerge onto the street that has this building on it. You see Aslo playing on top of a roof nearby. <laughs> <laughs> Tapping his foot on the shingles. <laughs> and Doing a merry jig. The nearest zombies are about 30 feet away from you, just on the other side of the street here. But they're all starting to move towards Aslo. So I'm like working up the courage to make this jump. And then Aslo just pulls out these bagpipes and starts... Hammering away, and then I hear Tokus like, like clattering down the street behind, and I'm like, "What is going on?" 
I, there, I, will, I, I can't jump under these circumstances. <laughs> it's ruining my concentration. So I like do if I like look go to the other side of the roof and look down. Can I see Tokus coming? You see him running basically straight at the crowd of zombies. Uh, on the front of the street or in the alley? He's out of an alley into the larger street. Okay. Well, I, I need to act fast. Like they're. Not gonna be distracted forever. I imagine you're not gonna keep playing this song, right? Eventually, you're gonna stop. <laughs> I'll keep playing as long as I need to. 